You are what I'm looking for. Welcome to the Joe Fixes It channel, where today I'm going to show you how to calibrate your Mark II Volkswagen speedometer head. Mark II Volkswagens were made from 1985 through 1992. They came out in gasoline versions and diesel versions, and they still make diesels today. Even though the instrument clusters may vary in appearance, there's really no difference between gasoline, diesel, and different models when it comes to calibrating or repairing your Mark II speedometer head. This is your typical speedometer head. This one came out of a 1986 Jetta diesel. Today, I'm just doing a calibration of the speedometer head. I'm not showing you how to take it out of the instrument cluster and I'm not showing you how to take the instrument cluster out of the car. That will be covered in another video. In order to do this little job, you're going to need several things and you're going to have to do a little bit of construction yourself. But in the end, you'll be able to calibrate your own speedometer and won't have to rely on anybody else to do this job, even if you can find somebody that can. Of course, you'll need a speedometer head out of your car in working condition. You'll need a laser handheld no-touch tachometer. You can buy them on Amazon. They come in many, many different flavors. Uh, the one I bought cost me about $25. Uh, and it works just fine for what I need to do. If you didn't get reflective tape with your tachometer, some whiteout will do just fine. You'll need some black electrical tape, a good quality corded electric drill. You're also going to need an accurate way of controlling the RPM of your drill. I went to my local Home Depot and picked up an electrical outlet, a dimmer switch like you would use on the wall in your house, and a piece of extension cord. Another thing you're gonna do, you're gonna need to cut the cable in off of a speedometer to use to drive your speedometer during the calibration process. So you may ask, what's the RPM that I'm gonna have to spin this drill at in order to tell if my speedometer is accurate? 35 miles an hour is 925 RPM, 55 is 1450, 60 is 1600, 65 is 1725, and 70 miles an hour is 1800 and 75 RPMs. So let's go out in the shop and let me show you how it's done. The first thing I'm gonna do is set the drill in the vise so I can work on it easily. Next, we're gonna take the speedometer cable in and put it in the chuck, tighten the chuck down on it. There, ready to spin the speedometer. We're gonna take our RPM control rheostat device that I made with an extension cord and plug it in. And then plug the drill into the RPM control device. Then we're going to go to the shiny part of the drill chuck and wrap it with black electrical tape so the reflective part of the drill won't interfere with the tachometer. Because I don't have any reflective tape left, I'm going to put a strip of white out for the tachometer to read right here. Now since I don't have three hands, I'm going to use a tripod to hold the tachometer in place. My trusty tachometer, mount it right here. Now that I've got it in place, it's time to set the tachometer speed up. You want to calibrate your speedometer to a mid-range speed. I gave you the numbers for a good range throughout the band in case you want to check that. Typically, I will calibrate my speedometer to 60 miles an hour. Okay, we've got it pretty close to 1600 RPM. That's about as close as I can ever hope to get it. Okay, that's my test speedometer. That's accurate. But let me show you how to actually set one right that is not correct. This thing is reading about eight miles an hour too fast. Basically, we pull the speedometer needle off and stick it back on in the right spot. It seems crude, but that's kind of how it's done. The pointer needle on it is very brittle and you can snap it off just by looking at it wrong. So you have to be really, really careful about how you handle that. And very carefully snap that over the, over the pin so it's floating loose. And then take your fingers like this with a little pinching motion and just pull it right off. That was not stuck on there very hard because I've had it on and off several times. Sometimes they stick pretty hard and you just have to be persistent. I wouldn't pry on it with anything because you don't want to damage the speedometer face. Now on most of the speedometer faces, Volkswagen will put an index marker on there and you can barely see it in this, but it's a little tiny white marker that you can point your pointer at to get you within one or two miles an hour of the right speed. We set it very lightly back on the pin and don't put it, just put it on there so it's loose and that way you can move it around and get it right on the right spot where you want it. I'm going to start off by pointing at index marker because we were pretty far off and then just 
touch it a little bit there to make it stick on the shaft. It doesn't need to be on there that tight for the thing to stay on there during normal operations. So let's go ahead and see if we got it a little bit closer. That's pretty darn close. I'm happy with that. I usually don't get it on the first try, but if you do, don't tweak it anymore because it'll take you hours to get it right again. If you'd like to see a video on how to repair these speedometers, how to fix the odometers, because often the plastic gears get old and crack and break loose from the shafts and your odometers quit working in these cars. Some of you guys, if you're driving any of these Mark IIs, you know that to be true. If you want to see me repair one of those speedometers, leave me a comment. If you want to see a video on how to remove the cluster from the dash or you want to see me remove the speedometer head from the cluster, let me know. If you found this interesting, if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel, support the channel, leave me a comment, ask questions, and I will see you in the next video. I know what I'm looking for.